You know, I really like Watchmen. It's one of the few comic books I've actually read from beginning to end, and I loved every minute of it. Set in a dystopian 1980s America on the brink of nuclear war, it delves deep into the mythos surrounding the superhero genre, how the world would cope with the reality of actual supermen living among us, and the fallout of giving flawed and very human people the power to operate above the law. And I guess I'm one of those weird people who also enjoyed the Zack Snyder movie. Yeah, it wasn't perfect, but overall I consider it an honest and faithful attempt to adapt some pretty challenging source material into a concise and effective two and a half hour story. And for me at least, it worked. In an era when superhero movies were already starting to reshape themselves into the Marvel mold, all bright and colourful, filled with snarky humour, bloodless violence and an overriding sense that the good guys would always win, Watchmen dared to be dark and gritty and gruesome. It was a movie that wasn't afraid to explore the deeply flawed personalities behind the superhero masks, and it delivered a thought-provoking and morally ambiguous ending that dared to ask the biggest question of all, who are the real bad guys? So when I found out that a TV adaptation of Watchmen was on the cards, I was initially excited. Surely all that extra screen time would allow the writers to work in all the subplots and backstory that the movie was forced to gloss over. Then I found out it was being written by Damon Lindelof, the man responsible for some of the most disappointing cinematic flops of the past decade, and suddenly my excitement turned to apprehension. Could a TV series possibly deliver on the epic scope of the comic books? How would it Today's audiences react to Watchmen's complex themes, retro 1980s setting, and the deconstruction of the superhero genre. Would Damon Lindelof be able to stay true to the complex and morally questionable characters like Roshark, Dr. Manhattan, and the comedian? Well, the good news is that we don't have to answer any of those questions, because the Watchmen TV show is related to the comic in name only. In reality, it's a cheap, clunky, agenda-pushing piece of trash, set 35 years after the events of the comic book, featuring almost none of the original characters, settings, themes, ideas, or tone of the Watchmen comic. A show that might as well be called Law and Order Social Justice Unit, because it has about as much to do with Watchmen as J.J. Abrams has to do with quality writing and original ideas. No! Oh. Allow me to elaborate. So the first episode of Watchmen lays its cards on the table right away by kicking off in 1921 with the Tulsa Race Riots, where two desperate parents try to smuggle their young boy out before they get overwhelmed by the angry mob. Anyway, the parents get killed but the boy makes it out alive, and in the aftermath he finds an abandoned baby and decides to take care of it. Flash forward to the present day, and a black cop gets gunned down after pulling over a white truck driver late at night, sparking alarm amongst the local police that it's the work of a white supremacist group called the Seventh Cavalry, who've taken the words of the original Roshark as some kind of call to arms, and were previously responsible for murdering dozens of cops in a single night, an event that became known as the White Knight. Get it? Because they're white, and it happened at night. This prompts the Chief of Police, Judd Crawford, to bring in the masked vigilante known as Sister Knight to head up the investigation, because she has a very unique set of skills. Bleach. Uh, Jesus, Damon, that couldn't even have sounded good in your head. Anyway, this is all fine because the police are forced to wear masks in the wake of White Knight to protect them against reprisal attacks. They operate in a culture of extreme racial tension, which is inflamed by the descendants of the Tulsa riot victims being paid financial reparations from the government, basically taxing the descendants of the people who once persecuted them. Because, you know, nothing says fairness like being forced to pay money to people you've never met for crimes that were committed generations before you were even born. So they bring in a suspected member of the cavalry for interrogation and Sister Knight beats the shit out of him because I guess that's the thing you're allowed to do now. It's a total mystery why people are so antagonistic towards the police and government in this show. And he eventually gives up the location of a cavalry safe house, so Sister Knight and the gang head there to make some less than peaceful arrests. But it all goes tits up and there's a big firefight which forces them into a pitched battle against the cavalry. And 
naturally Sister Knight is able to beat up men twice her size because at this point I guess physics, gravity, muscular strength and body mass are concepts you can just choose to ignore if they become inconvenient. Anyway, some of the cavalry manage to escape in an aeroplane but it's okay because Judd intercepts them in the owl ship which he somehow has possession of. Nice to see a completely out of context reference to the real Watchmen here. So he shoots down the plane but also manages to crash the owl ship in the process but everything turns out fine and they have a good laugh about it. And I kind of expected Judd to get shot at that moment but nah the scene just keeps going and going. Why are you laughing like this you fucking tool? You just destroyed a priceless one of a kind aircraft to shoot down a plane that could easily have been tracked and intercepted later. How did you even become chief of police? So then we randomly skip over to Jeremy Irons who's lording it up in a country manor house, riding horses and writing plays while butt naked. Because, you know, why not, right? Let's just shove random shit in with no context and assume people will actually care enough to learn the answers. Oh, and sometimes baby squid rain down from the sky. I just wanted to drop that in there without any explanation because that's pretty much what the show does too. You know you're not writing for Lost anymore, right Damon? So anyway, the gang goes over to Judd's house for a dinner party to celebrate destroying the owl ship and killing a bunch of rednecks. Then Sister Knight goes home to fuck her boyfriend, but suddenly she gets a call telling her to go to the middle of nowhere. And she does it without bringing any backup or protection, even though this is a world where cops are routinely targeted for assassination. But it turns out that Lewis Gossett Jr is waiting for her in a wheelchair and Judd's hanging out with him, but he's not exactly the life of the party anymore. <laughs> and that's it, that's the first episode of Watchmen, if you can call it that. You know, I guess there's two different ways to go about reviewing this show, and choosing between them is a bit like having to make a choice between chlamydia or gonorrhea. Either way, it's gonna be messy and painful. The more forgiving option is to see Watchmen as simply a generic crime fighting drama set in a dystopian America rife with racial tension. But even under these circumstances, I'd consider it to be weakly plotted, cheaply shot, badly acted and ham-fisted, with dull characters and preachy self-righteous dialogue that sounds like it's been written by a 16-year-old social justice activist with no life experience and limited understanding of adult behaviour. Kind of reminds me of another show to be honest. The characters are all crushingly dull and homogenous. Nobody has any real personality, no quirks or traits that make them memorable or distinctive. Everyone's just kind of competent and stoic. There's no loose cannons or dangerous renegades to mix things up. No conflicting points of view that cause dissent amongst our heroes. Just a bunch of people doing their jobs and saying lines. A good show will give you a broad sense of who each character is and what they want right off the bat. Yeah, you'll discover a lot more about them as time goes on, but you should at least have a sense of who's who by the end of the first episode. But I don't get that here at all. There's no sense of what anyone's personality is, what drives them, what they love and fear. It doesn't help that most of the actors deliver bland and indifferent performances, like this is a pilot they don't expect to get picked up. Jeremy Irons hams it up to the best of his ability, although if he turns out to be who I think he is, it's gonna make for the most disappointing antagonist since Kylo Ren. The attempt at creating an atmosphere of mystery and intrigue is another big failure for me. It's fine to have inexplicable events tied into the narrative, but this only works if you get your audience invested in your story and characters. It worked for a show like Lost, because the first episode gripped you with a thrilling intro, a diverse cast of interesting and unique characters played by good actors who'd been thrust into a dangerous situation they were totally unprepared for. You couldn't help but root for them, and when strange otherworldly things started happening around them, you instinctively wanted to learn more. But when you don't really care about the characters or the situation they're in, well, the mysteries just come across as self-indulgent and boring. These are serious issues that exist within Watchmen, even if you choose to ignore its source material and judge the show purely on its own merits. Unfortunately, this isn't just a generic crime fighting show. The thing that really boils my piss about this whole situation is that this absolute turd dares to ride the coattails of the Watchmen name. It does this for cheap name recognition and the hopes of capturing a built-in audience, while simultaneously ignoring or shitting over everything that made Watchmen so compelling in the first place. Gone is the grim, atmospheric 1980s setting. Gone is the threat of nuclear Armageddon. Gone are the fascinating characters like the comedian, Dr. Manhattan, Night Owl and Roshark. 
Gone are the complex and intriguing questions about human nature and morality, and gone is the exploration of what it means to be a superhero and the effect it has on the world around you. And what do we have in place of all these grand ideas? A bunch of dumb, boring cops tracking dumb racist rednecks through farms and small towns, spouting obnoxiously self-righteous dialogue and pretending like any of this is supposed to matter. This is the kind of show that could be set anywhere in any random American town. It feels small, petty, generic and completely unsuited to the fictional world it's been awkwardly forced into. It would be like making a Game of Thrones sequel set entirely around Hot Pie trying to strike out on his own and establish his own catering business in the face of a rival bakery. Actually, fuck it, that sounds more entertaining than this crap. And I can't help but ask the obvious question, why? Why choose Watchmen as your vehicle for this? What are you hoping to say that's interesting or insightful? And who are you expecting this show to appeal to when you seem intent on insulting and demonising your biggest demographic? It's become pretty much par for the course these days that new shows have to have some kind of political messaging to shove down our throats because I guess we can't be allowed to form our own opinions about stuff anymore. We have to literally be told what to think. And who better to tell us than the wise, balanced, well-rounded people of Hollywood? <laughs> The problem is that whether or not your show manages to successfully explore political subjects without compromising its artistic integrity ultimately comes down to one thing. Is the writer any fucking good? I'll leave you to form your own opinions about that one. But drinker, you exceedingly intoxicated yet curiously arousing prodigy I hear you say. You're just not willing to accept the way this show challenges your worldview and beliefs about society and it sounds like you're finding reasons to dislike it. You need to do better. Well, paragraph in my script, imagine you've ordered a burger at your favourite restaurant and the waitress brings you a big steaming turd on a bun. And when you complain about it, she says, you're just not willing to accept how this fecal sandwich challenges your worldview and beliefs about burgers, so you're finding reasons to dislike it. You need to do better. The point being, I might not be a connoisseur of cinema, but to paraphrase Sister Knight, I've got a nose for shit. And this show stinks worse than my toilet on a Sunday morning. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. Go away now.